Hey, what's going on? We have unit two, lesson 11, the cool down. Some of you guys are asking me for this, so I'm gonna make a quick video and address some of these uh, uh, items of concern all at one time. So really, we are looking uh, for the first part. It says explain why the slope of line A is two over six. And then second, label the horizontal and vertical sides of the triangle with expressions representing their lengths. And finally, explain why y minus 7 over uh, x minus 5 equals 2 over 6. All right, we're going to do that right now. So to address the very first question, it has to do with slope, right? And we can use the variable m to represent slope. And basically, this is just a quotient. And it, it is the vertical distance over the horizontal distance of this uh, slope triangle here. So uh, by uh, vertical, we're looking at uh, going up and down, and horizontal is side to side. So there is just one point given here. It's 5, 7. There's another point that's labeled, but we don't know the exact coordinates of it. It could represent anything x and y. So I'm going to pick another point that is on one of these grid lines. So these are vertical grid lines right here. You can see them all on the piece of paper. Hope you can see these vertical grid lines here. There's a bunch of horizontal grid lines going across, right? Now I'm concerned with where those orange lines I just drew are going to match up with line a. And I could see that right here, right? So line A goes like this. I can see a point right there where all three lines meet, you know? I see another one right here. And then I see another one right here, actually. So there's, there's really a bunch where the grid lines and the line sort of all intersect. That's what I'm interested in. So let's use this one right here. And all I have to do is draw a slope triangle. And by slope triangle, I mean the slope, the, uh, the hypotenuse of that triangle is going to be um, the slope. And then I'm interested in the vertical and horizontal distances connecting the two points. So one way to do it is just to go down until I'm on the same horizontal line as this one. And I could just count, right? I mean, this is two units. I'm counting one, two. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six units going across the bottom. So if I'm looking at the vertical distance of two and the horizontal distance of six, that's kind of explaining, and that's kind of representing the vertical distance as 2 and the horizontal distance as 6. You didn't have to use that slope triangle. There's a bunch here. As long as you're using a point that's on the line, that's going to be super great. I'm going to just take this, draw a horizontal line over. And I'm going to draw a vertical line coming down. And if you notice, the slope here is 2 over 6 again, right? The vertical distance is still 2. The horizontal distance is still 6. All right, Kohler, what about this point right here and this point up here? Well, let's take a look. Um, I'm going to draw a giant slope triangle coming across the top and then going down. And let's count. You're like, Kohler, that is definitely not a distance of 2, and that's definitely not a distance of 6. But let's see what happens, because we're really looking at the quotient or the ratio between the vertical and horizontal distances. I can count this distance as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And then I can count this horizontal distance, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This horizontal distance right here is 15. So. I have 5 for vertical, and then I have 15 for the horizontal distance. Guess what? These are, like, if you look at them like fractions or quotients, they're all going to reduce down to the same thing, and that's 1 third or, you know, 2 sixths 
2 over 6 is also the same thing. So it works no matter what two points you pick. As long as you're looking for those horizontal and vertical grid lines, you're going to be able to find the slope no matter what. Um, in the, the lesson we just did, we saw that the horizontal and vertical distances ended up being um, 3 quarters, right? We saw that it was 0.75 each time. If you actually divide it out and turn it into a decimal, you're going to get one single number, 0 0.75, 75 hundredths. All right, the second part. Label each of the side lengths. So, all right, so there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, well, let's look at the, uh, the triangle that we have out. And I'm going to look at like this little triangle right here. These are known points and known values. I can look at that point and give it a name. 2 over or 2 free x and 6 for the y. And I can also look at this point right here and give it a name. 5 comma 6. And I want you to notice the 5, the x values line up with 5, right? And the y values, 6 and 6, for this point right here, is going to line up uh, with 6. So I can find the distance. You know, I could just count, right? I know it's already one vertical. But all I need to do to figure that out is to take a look at the values that are different, which is 7 and 6, and then subtract them to get 1. 7 minus 6 is 1. And I can do that for the x values over here, 5 minus 2, to get 3. Now, obviously, you can just count 1, 2, 3, and you can count this as 1, but I'm doing that to sort of set you up for the next part. Because the next part, we have a point that is a little bit different. That point is way different because it does not have an actual x and y value. It's just, just, it's just any value, right? x or y could represent any value, any point on this line. So it's unknown in our situation. But we do know a couple of things. We know that this point right here has an x and a y value. And that x and y value, and I'll use the same color here in orange, is going to be whatever this is. It's going to be somewhere between um, 9 and 10, but we don't care about that. We just want the x value as being x. And the y value, of course, is going to be the same. It's going to be along this line here. The y value we can identify as 7. So that y value definitely is 7, and I will highlight where I see that, the 7 in that point and the 7 in that point. Now, I'm doing this because to find the difference to find the, the lengths of the vertical and horizontal um, sides of this slope triangle, we can't do that by finding just a single number. We have to find some differences. So the x values are the same. So I'm going to subtract the y values, y minus 7. And that's going to give us that distance right there. That long orange line is, uh, is y. We don't know, know what it is. But we do know this part of that line is 7. So this is just going to be y represented by y minus 7. Now what about the vertical line? It's the same, same, same situation, right? We know that the y values are 7. Those are the same. So what we need to do is just subtract the x values. So the distance between those two points are just going to be x minus 5. What, Kohler? What are you talking about? Well, this green line right here, we actually don't know how long that is, right? We actually don't know, but we, we, we just call it x. So that green line is, is x, goes from there to there. But we do know that from here to here is 5. And that's like sort of this part of the green line. And so this part, the unknown part, is just going to be x minus 5. Just like in the other problem, it was 5 minus 2. We don't know what it is, so it's just x minus 5. 
And this leads us to the last part of the question. It says, explain why x minus 7 over, wait, no, it didn't say that. It said uh, y minus 7 over x minus 5. Why is that equal to 2 sixths? Well, based on what you know about slope triangles and similar triangles, the slope or the, the, the ratio of the vertical over horizontal height or lengths are going to be the same no matter where those triangles lie on that, um, on that line. So that is why. That is because they both represent the same slope, which is the vertical distance over the horizontal distance. on this line. And remember, they are similar triangles. All slope triangles are similar triangles, so they're going to have that same ratio all the way down the line. y minus 7 over x minus 5 is going to be equal to 2 over 6. And we need this information because we're going to be using this information tomorrow to solve some problems using this equation. All right, I hope that was helpful a little bit. I will see you guys next time, and have a great day.